All right, so this is going to be a really thorough lesson on the anatomy of ear stuff, as well as what chiropractic could do, which basically is just the anatomy of nerves, and then um, what fluid buildup would be, things like that. So I'm going to get pretty heavy into the anatomy book here, but it's going to show you straight up that it's not my opinion, it's just anatomy and physiology that control ear stuff. I'm just going to call it stuff because most generally it's infections, but also it can be fluid buildup or it could be um, osseous problems, dizziness, things like that. I'm going to kind of go over all of that. If you have specific questions, just get a hold of me, okay? So I won't be on camera. I'm going to be pointing it down to the books a lot. So pay very close attention. Feel free to rewind if you need, okay? So I'm going to grab the camera here. All right. Switch to mode so you can see what I'm looking at. All right, now this is anatomy of the inner ear. So this here is obviously the actual ear itself. This is where the sound comes in. It vibrates against the tympanic membrane right here. It hits these little bones, sends a signal down in through here. That in turn goes through here, goes through this cochlea, and then you hear it. Now, chiropractically, what's important to note is that yellow things like this, those are nerves. For instance, this nerve here would be the facial nerve. And then this one here would be the vestibular nerve, it's called. Should be able to see that there. Facial nerve, vestibular nerve, cochlear nerve. There's nerve, nerve. So you have nerves running in there because otherwise how would the body know what's there if there's not a nerve connected to it? This little line down here is the eustachian tube leading to the nasopharynx or in other words your sinus back in nasal meaning nose pharynx meaning throat so your nose throat area <laughs> um, okay so that's really important to note right there another one so you see this tympanic membrane now if you were looking at it from outside the ear but the tympanic membrane is gone this is what you would see little bones and oh what's that thing Corda tympani nerve. So you have a nerve that goes into that to see what the heck is going on with everything. So clearly there is innervation. Now that's important. Then we go on to this. So as you can see, another nerve here. Facial nerve. That's part of the facial nerve. This would be the tympanic membrane. So this is the medial wall, meaning the inside view basically of that. All right, here you can see this vestibulocochlear nerve connecting to all these internal structures. So there's nerves that run everywhere in this, okay? Again here, this would be the ear pulled back, so it'd be kind of like a side view like this. This right here is the cerebellum, this big gray blob, and then it has these nerves that come out of it, okay? So it's important to note all of these things. I'm gonna switch this back. Basically, I just want you to know that there's a ton of nerves running through those. Now, chiropractically, we think of the nerve as the controlling thing for everything in the body. It goes to the ear as well. So, for instance, if you're having an ear infection, you want proper nerve supply to that because then the brain can sense it and help the body fix itself. If you're having dizziness, it will go into what's called the canals in there, balance it out so the dizziness stops. Or... If you're having something like fluid buildup, it can rebalance the way it holds pressure, that's what the fluid is for, and it will balance itself. That's the goal. Now, philosophically and anatomically and physiologically, all that stuff makes sense, okay? So I'm going to go a little more in depth here. Now we're going from the ear back to the brain. So you can take a look at this. So you can see this picture is the brain it's looking at it from the bottom view okay so if you plop somebody's brain out slapped it upside down on the table this is what it would look like now important to note here this is the brain stem you see all these little things coming out here those are all the nerves as they exit specifically let's take a look at this one here and where that goes so that goes to the inner portion of the ear again vestibulocochlear nerve okay also another big one that's important for us that comes up here is that facial nerve okay 
So, as you can see from that picture, it runs right by the ear, and that is inside of the ear itself. All right. Now, we can look at this here. So again, this would be medulla oblongata, so that is a cross section of the base part of the brain essentially. Sends these nerves out this way, right up into these inner ear portions, okay? And this is the facial nerve. So then it all goes into this, the corda tympani nerve, running right through there. The tympanic cavity. Now, for instance, let's talk about tubes, which are not as common anymore because they didn't see that great of results with it. If they want to put tubes in your kid's ear, that generally means they're trying to equal out a fluid buildup. So it'd be like having a bunch of liquid in one side and then there's a barrier and air outside of it. So they're trying to put a hole that equals out in between the two. Why would the body put a solid membrane somewhere if it if it could equal out by having a hole in it if that was beneficial the body would have just put a hole inside of the membrane it's shut off like that for a reason okay so the fluid buildup needs to be taken at a different angle okay oftentimes it's improper nerve supply coming from the neck which we'll talk about here we're already talking about the nerves a lot of kids are having dairy, and that builds up fluids in their actual throat. It plugs up the inner part inside of there, in the nose throat area. So it builds up basically scuzz in there because it doesn't really like the milk. And it's, the body's reaction is to make snot, so it can somehow equal this stuff out. And that will plug the inside portion of it so the fluid just builds, 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 builds with snot and spit. So, get them off dairy. There you go. Now, <clears throat> let's talk a little about why the neck would be important for addressing ear issues, okay? Sorry, I might have been a little fuzzy on that shot. Okay. Now look at this. So, this would be if you ripped all the skin off somebody and a bunch of muscles. So, as you can see right up in here, you see these nerves coming out through this area? All of them coming down through the neck. Now, what you don't see is that there's vertebrae in here surrounding all of this stuff. Now, this is an important one here. You remember what nerves we talked about? That vestibulocochlear? So that's right there. That facial nerve, that's right there. And what's this? Oh, a bony structure. Right. So, if they're contained within a bony structure and they got... What you don't see is a lot of spider webby connective tissue that holds all this junk in your body together. Oh, this is the trigeminal nerve that goes all over to the face, by the way, as you can see here. But what they don't show you is that this is all surrounded by bone. So if you can move the bones, it can also shift all of the connective tissuey stuff and just all pull it. I'm going to show you that here right after this picture. Now again, look at here. This back portion here is the base of the skull. You have these vessels and everything that run through that, but also you have the bone right in there surrounding that. Look at this. Nerve, nerve, plexus, which is a group of nerves. Gray rami, which is a, plunk, a, a plexus of nerves sympathetic trunk so it's all this nerve activity running through here if you can affect the way those bones are positioned to allow the nerves to freely flow they'll get to where they need to go just fine okay so as you can see again we're going to get to this part which is really cool <clears throat> when i talked about how everything is connected and there's a bunch of tissue holding everything together well, right up at the top here, you'll hear a lot of chiropractors talk about the C1 or the atlas bone. It's the very top bone right here. Now inside of that is contained what? The base of the brain, the brain stem, as it leads from the spinal cord. If you can affect that, if it's subluxated, if there's a problem in that area, and you can affect that, 
Not only will it allow nerve flow to freely move, it will also take pressure off the brain stem, which will allow the deep, deep, deep nerves that run into the skull to be relieved as well, okay, if that's the issue. I'm going to show you evidence of that right here. So you can see that this cord in here, the pia mater overlying the spinal cord, which is this. Then you have a layer called the arachnoid matter right there. And then you have the dura matter over top of that. Well, inside of the cord, which is harder to see maybe if you haven't taken this course, but this would be the top view of this, so it would be looking down this way. There's tons of connective tissue, and this thing out here, that's bone. You see how this nerve runs through that narrow channel out through the bone? See? Spinal nerve right there. You see how it's got all these connections everywhere? Well, if you can twist this bone, if all of this is surrounded, that's all red stuff's all muscle. If you can twist that in there, wouldn't it make sense that if these were, pretend these are little strings, if you push on this side, it's going to pull on that structure there. Now we're talking about minute little things, but that's how the body works in minute little factors. And if you can minutely affect that nerve in order to allow it to flow freely, so it can get to where it needs to go, that kink will be taking just like if you take a kink out of a garden hose so the water can run through. That's exactly what we're trying to do in chiropractic. Okay. So, if you can take pressure off the neck by affecting an issue in there, you can give it a lot of relief. Now I'm going to go back to one of the original pictures in the ear and show you another cool thing. It's not really so much about chiropractic, it's just something cool that at least I've picked up. I hope my other fellow chiros have too. Now look at this. Again, all the structures are connected. You can actually take this little bottom part of the ear here and yank it. It will pull on all this skin here. It will gently pull on the tympanic membrane, which can loosen these bones here. And it can also loosen this part of this, what they call that... Um, that eustachian tube or the auditory tube, it would gently pull that too in order to help it be free and relaxed. When they talk about fluid buildup, they're talking about this inside of here. All right, so that will help it to drain out. So, clearly, as you can say, this is not my opinion, it's just simple anatomy. All right. So, that's what we're looking at when it comes to ear stuff. So, it's pretty clear that. You just have to look at it from the perspective of anatomy and just say, okay, well, if there's a fluid buildup, the body's really smart. If it wanted to equal out that fluid, it would. The fluid is built up for a reason. It's trying to protect something. It's probably built up because the kid's having dairy or something else they're allergic to, <clears throat> so it builds up mucus because mucus goes to surround stuff. It's the same reason why if you get an infection, you get all full of ear because it sends fighting material, which in the head means mucus, to surround that stuff so that eventually it can get out. All right. If you put a tube in there, I just can't even really understand why you would need to add air into that area um, from the outside. The body would be smart enough, it would just put a hole in the tympanic membrane around the side of it itself. This is the hole that we have to that area, our mouth and our nose, okay? So, yes. Chiropractic, in theory, and in anatomical theory, and in physiological theory, help relieve pressure built up on the inner ear through affecting the route of origination of the nerves in order to help open them up. And if you give a little one of those to the ear, it should help loosen that too. Plus, it feels warm and fuzzy and good. So, that's lesson number ear. If you have any questions, please feel free to call me. I love talking about this stuff. Study this stuff pretty heavily, so um, please let me know if you ever have any issues or anything like that with it, alright? Thanks a lot. Have a great day.